Welcome to another episode of Morning Meds. This is FamtiFamily.com's devotional spot for males to meditate on Yahweh's word for good success. We are grateful for your attention today on this Morning Meds. Topic today is you sinned worse than your ancestor. Yesterday we ended on the topic that the soul that sins, the person who sins, shall die from Ezekiel 18. Now we are on this topic in Jeremiah 16, 9-13, where Jeremiah is saying that you sinned worse than your ancestors. So we have moved beyond the point where the next generation, you know, we're encouraging them to be responsible. Now, the next generation is being judged by Jeremiah as being worse than the generations that came before them. In Jeremiah, we were in Jeremiah 16, 9 to 13. In verses 1 to 9 of Jeremiah 16, Jeremiah proclaims Yahweh's anger with the Hebrews and he forsakes them. He tells Jeremiah, not to settle down there because of the destruction that is pending and he is to not mourn with the people there. Now the key in this section of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 16, that we want to focus on, the key verse here is verse 6, is verse 12, I'm sorry, where God or Yahweh proclaims via Jeremiah that they have excelled in evil beyond their ancestors. Now, their ancestors worship idols, see verse 11, and everyone went after their own will, doing what they wanted. They forsook obeying Yahweh's law. They forsook the will of God. The Hebrews put one giant full chimney on God's dining table. We want to here focus on the fact that Jeremiah we know Jeremiah as the weeping prophet, the last man standing, the last prophet standing. Of course, he's there with Ezekiel, Hosea, some other guys. Um, and then afterwards, Daniel is in actually in the exile with the Hebrews. But we see here with all of the rebelliousness of the Hebrews, when we read the stories in especially Judges, uh, of what how how the Hebrew culture spiraled out of control, and even there Yahweh was still merciful, still blessing them, still giving them judges, good well, relatively good leaders. But at the end of the day, they even they it says that the people there was no king in Israel, even though we know there was that Yahweh was their king. But they did not recognize Yahweh as their king and they did whatsoever they wanted. But here, these generations later, after Judges, we see in Jeremiah, the, the kingdom of Judah, <laughs> they go even worse than the idolatry. We hear stories of women boiling their children and eating them. We see stories of people who basically are eating the leftovers from lepers. There is stories of child, continued stories of child sacrifice, which seems to be a consistent way in which the, the people of that time that are outside of the, the promise of God, the Canaanites, etc., they worship their own Baal idols, etc. And here in Jeremiah 16, 9 to 13, we are seeing Jeremiah say, hey, no matter how bad we saw our ancestors, we are worse. Now, for us as males, we don't want to say this in a condemnatory way for our, kid, our children to feel like we're condemning them. But it is our job to correct and to discipline. Who a father loves, he corrects. The same way God loves us, so he corrects us. He corrects us because he does not want, he wants us to change our behavior. So, in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 16, 9 to 13, is telling the people that no matter how bad our ancestors were, we have excelled in sin. We have excelled in evil beyond our ancestors. We, as a current generation, cannot blame our parents because we, are, we have learned from previous morning meds 
we are responsible for our own actions. Yes, our parents may have set us up in a sense with bad examples, but we have submitted to those examples with our choices. Our parents cannot curse us. We curse ourselves with our choices. And we have, in fact, gone beyond the bad things that our parents have done. We have gone after worst, worst idolatry. And with the technolog technological advancements that we have, we have now AI. You can look at sexual perversion turned up to the 10th power. You can do things in a way that is even more secretive than before. If you call it that, even though you can, you do leave a digital footprint every time you go on a porn site, every time you, 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 you engage in some kind of virtual naughtiness, there are people who, there are hackers, etc., that can bring up your history on your phone, on your computers. There are people who can dig up your, your history, and people do this, especially when you get uh, older and you're, you're now in politics or you're a successful business owner, and they extort you for money. So we can see that the sins that we have are sins that are more... It's basically, we're sinning in the, world in the same way. Sin is not very creative in the sense of what the sin is. But the medium through which sin is carried out, the technology and how it can reach people, how quickly you can, you can steal on a mass level now with blockchain, with all of these, these advances. And now with quantum computing, you can rob people at 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 rapid speeds you can you can rob millions more people than you could back in the day when people had to literally pick a po pick a pocket break into a door now they can do this from the comfort of their own home you don't have to go to a strip club anymore you can log on to porn hub you can log on to various websites you have uh, cam girls cam models that can match your every they can meet every fantasy that your husband or wife has that your children have once they have a good credit card or debit card and these things can be done and you can wipe your you wipe off your your mouth and you can go to work with your dressed up nobody knows that you are undercover pervert or some kind of warped person who loves to 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 engage in pedophilia nobody can no needs to know that about you unless you're hacked or something like that, and somebody somebody gets your digital information. The point we're making is that we are sinning worse than our ancestors today. We are using the technology, we are using the advancements that Yahweh has allowed many of us to experience today for evil purposes, and we exploit and dehumanize ourselves and others in a much more traumatic way than ever before. Um, we're in a state, Florida, where it is rampant in terms of what is happening with children online. Parents have to be so careful, and predators prowl now. And, and you, you are, if, you're, if, you're not, if you're not someone that is, is confident in God, confident in the power of God to protect our children, you want to essentially just lock yourself down because of how wicked people have become. Well, not that the people are wicked. The wickedness is magnified because of the means that we have to be wicked. It's like you're now able, you have all this technology. It's almost like a baby playing with the nuclear football in the White House. We have technology and we have resources that are that are too powerful for a sinful mind to operate. So here, Jeremiah is looking at this consistent degradation in our moral standard with each generation. And it might not be that the sins are new, because it's still the same idolatry, dishonoring your parents, breaking the Sabbath. It's still the same sins of lying, covetousness, uh, murder and adultery, break, not being faithful in your marriage, etc., but we can do these things with so much more ease nowadays. We can do these things with so much more impact that it is scary what our children will, 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 what we'll have to tell our children. A brother called Elliot Holtz online on YouTube, he's, he said he's starting to tell his children, hey, we do not eat other humans. And AI is not God. The obvious things that we would say, why would you want to tell your children that? We have to start 
coaching and mentoring our children to the most basic standards of morality nowadays.